Once upon a time, the devil laughed with fiendish glee. The gates of hell stood wide open, and damnation lay in wait for everyone. But this story isn't about the devil, it's about God and Martin Luther. Like most Catholics 500 years ago, Luther feared God. He prayed and prayed, but his fear persisted. Luther wondered why. He brooded long and hard upon the matter, while walking, at church, even on the latrine. Until it hit him. I found it! God does not hate us. He loves us, he rejoiced. We don't need to be afraid. The church exploits our fear to enrich itself, was his provocative idea. Out of this idea grew many others, and Luther trumpeted them far and wide. Such impudence, fumed the Pope when he got wind of Luther's views. His anger was unsurprising. After all, the church had amassed a fortune selling indulgences. What a lousy, no good monk, he cried. Only the Pope possesses the key to grace, Luther protested. Only God can bestow grace, and the Pope is a mere man. Recant, I order you to obey, the Pope seethed. Christians are free and subservient to no one, Luther insisted. But this went too far for the pontiff, who now threatened Luther. You will be excommunicated. Your writings will burn. Big deal, scoffed Luther as he heaped ridicule on the Pope. That's it, the Pope raged. This Luther, he must go, he cried and expelled him from the church. The emperor, too, took Luther to task for his beliefs. Take it all back, he demanded, especially that nonsense about freedom. That I cannot do, Luther replied. I must follow my conscience, he said in defiance. How dare you, the emperor exclaimed and declared Luther an outlaw. Wait a minute, the nobility thought. Conscience and freedom aren't such bad ideas. City and municipal officials also got to thinking, if what Luther says is true, then the church doesn't deserve another penny. We alone should determine where our money goes. But some Germans took this concept too far. When a merchant confronted a nobleman for taking his horses and wanted to burn down his house using Luther's idea of freedom as justification, Luther set the record straight. I never spoke of political freedom, he said. You are free in your thoughts, yet subjects you remain nonetheless. But it was too late. People had already embraced Luther and his ideas of freedom and conscience. Even now, we honor him with books, quotes, praises, exhibitions on his legacy. The cultural and intellectual transformation he triggered remains with us around the world to this day.